my dear people. The past week, as you my good readers will understand, has been special for me as it was the commemoration of the birthday of that towering fountain of wisdom, the Shungo. Indeed, as every year, it was a time to reflect on what an iconic figure he was. He was undoubtedly one of the continent's best leaders. I fondly miss the annual birthday celebrations, which were something to behold. The birthday cakes for Gashungo were so huge that the villagers in the area where the celebrations would have been held would all be able to grab a crumb or two of the cake. One, of course, cannot also help, during these commemorations, to despair of the impoverished leadership that has succeeded the telescopic foresight Gashungo. The difference in leadership between the wisdom imbued Gashungo and Scarf Moor is like night and day. Whereby Gashungo was resolute in any stance he has taken, Scarf Moor has been like a headless chicken with leadership mired in chaos and confusion. And Gwina introduced the Zimbabwe dollar and banned the multi-currency regime in 2019. But within a year had sunk back to the multi-currency regime as inflation shot through the roof. In 2018 he banned money changers, but ever since then they have actually multiplied. The octogenarian bizarrely banned banks from their core function of lending as he ran out of ideas of how to contain the economic crisis, which only worsened the situation before hurriedly reversing the preposterous ban. Scarf Moore has also made decisions that were brazenly unconstitutional before being forced to backtrack on them, something Gashungo would have never done. The appointment of the Zimbabwe Defense Forces Commander General Valerio Sibanda into the ZANU-PF Politburo is an embarrassing case in point. I would need to write a book to adequately chronicle Scarf Moore's shortcomings, and why it is almost an insult to compare his leadership to that of Gashungo. This is what Gashungo meant when he said that there was no one in the party that was capable of succeeding him. I am sure that as Zimbabweans continue to suffer under Anguina's wayward leadership, they sorely regret ever celebrating Gashungo's illegal ouster in that dark year of 2017. I see that Scarf Moore is trying to lay the groundwork for a devious campaign for an unconstitutional third term in office. The campaign was started by his tribesmen in Masfingo who have crafted a slogan alleging that their cabal leader will still be in power come 2030. He clearly didn't learn anything from Gashungo despite being his lieutenant for over three decades until that great betrayal in 2017. Zimbabweans have grown much wiser. Any attempt to push for an unpopular third term will end in tears. Mark my words. Muno Pengaea. The Zimbabwe United Passenger Company Zupco have revealed that it is terminating all contracts with urban transporters after its disastrous performance when it was ridiculously given the monopoly of public transport and what was yet another one of the harebrained ideas of the dispensation of poverty. Darkness and Confusion The one or two individuals interviewed by one state rag more or less said they would miss the Zupco Transportation Service, which they said was convenient. Munapinga one wonders whether this was a case of the author of the piece manufacturing these quotes, KKKKK. For most of the country's citizens, the termination of the Zupco monopoly was good riddance to bad rubbish. The incompetence and inefficient transport system by the state entity caused far more suffering than convenience. The long snaking queues of people rushing to work or going back home had become the order of the day as well the undignified scenes of rowdy touts grabbing the backsides of women as they pushed them through the windows of buses in their desperate bid to beat the long queues and get home. And God forbid if there was a national event as commuters would be left stranded as the Zupco buses were diverted to ferry crowds to these events. Though the monopoly was meant to reduce the spread of COVID-19, it ended up being a source of actually spreading the virus as commuters jostled and squeezed against each other in overcrowded Zupco buses. All in all, it was an unmitigated disaster, and most of the country's citizens will not miss it. The remarks by the Citizens Coalition for Change CCC leader Welshman Cube surely raised eyebrows. In an interview Cube pointed out that one cannot run an authoritarian, autocratic and theocratic opposition, and then expect people to believe that. Once you're in power, you'll no longer believe in autocracy, theocracy, and authoritarianism. This was an apparent reference to Nero who quit the party after the scandalous imposition of the clown Senjizo Chibangu, 
who has recalled the party's parliamentarians and councillors before foisting himself in the Senate. The remarks by such a senior party member show that the problems that were manifest in the party before the Chibanga madness. Cube's remarks in addition to the outrageous recalls by a self-imposed dimwit should be a wake-up call to Nero and his leadership style in any party or grouping he is going to lead. It reeks of double standards for Nero to criticize Scarf Moore and Co. for not adhering to the country's constitution when his own party does not even have a constitution and is guided by something as vague as strategic ambiguity. Food for thought for Nero as he trawls through the treacherous waters of Zimbabwe's politics. Nino Pengea. Stop it. Dr. Amai, stop it. PhD fake the standard.